when albert bandura first began work in social learning and aggression in children freud's views that aggressive behavior was an expression of underlying impulses which needed some sort of release was the prominent theory the freudian theory of catharsis suggested that if an observer watched violence being modeled then the observer's own need for violent behavior would be drained this view led to television executives increasing violent programming as a way to drain program viewers aggression drives and reduce aggressive behaviors this is the historical background for bandura ross and ross's 1961 seminal article transmission of aggression through imitation of aggressive models which is also known as the bobo doll experiment the participants for this study came from the sanford university nursery school 72 children 36 boys and 36 girls with a mean age of 52 months were recruited for this study this diagram shows how the participants were divided into the experimental conditions. 24 children were exposed to a male or female model showing aggressive behavior toward the Bobo doll. Some aggressive behaviors were kicking, throwing, or punching the doll. A separate group of 24 children were exposed to a male or female model exhibiting non-aggressive play behaviors. A third group of 24 children served as the control group and were not exposed to a model at all before the experimental play session began. The experiment began when children were led into a room and invited to play with stickers and stamps. Then the child was shown either the non-aggressive play model, which consisted of the model playing with tinker toys and ignoring the Bobo doll, or the aggressive play model, which consisted of the model first playing with the tinker toys and then aggressing towards the Bobo doll. The picture shown here is of a female model showing aggression towards the Bobo doll. Before given the chance to play with the toys themselves, children were shown to a different room with very attractive toys. After playing for a minute or two, the experimenter told the child that they could no longer play with those toys because the experimenter was saving them for other children. This was done to arouse aggression in the children. After the aggression arousal, the children were then led into the experimental room. Once in the experimental room, the children were allowed to free play with the same toys the model was provided. Some of the toys could be used in imitative aggression, such as imitating the model's behavior toward the Bobo doll, or non-imitative aggression, such as coming up with new ways to aggress towards the Bobo doll, such as shooting it with dart guns. There were also non-aggressive toys, such as a tea set, cars and trucks, and plastic farm animals. Depicted here is a female modeling aggressive behavior and then a boy and a girl imitating that same aggressive behavior. The child participant was allowed to free play for 20 minutes. The child's behavior was observed through a one-way mirror and scored by two observers. There was a very good inner rate reliability between the two observers. Table 1 shows the mean differences in the types of aggressive behavior displayed by the three groups. As suggested by the means of Table 1, children exposed to the aggressive model displayed more aggressive acts than those in the other conditions. Significance tests also revealed that children exposed to the aggression model displayed significantly more aggressive actions than did those in the other conditions. There were also some interesting gender effects from this study. Boys displayed more imitative physical aggression than girls. Boys and girls did not differ in their imitation of verbal aggression, however. Furthermore, a sex-by-model interaction revealed more detailed gender differences. Boys showed more physical and verbal imitative aggression, more non-imitative aggression, and more aggressive gunplay after exposed to the aggressive male model than female subjects. Significant patterns were not seen in the girls. The findings from this study challenge the behaviorist view of the time that rewards and punishments are the basis of learning. The results suggest that people can learn simply by observing and imitating others' behaviors. This study has been viewed as creating the shift from a behavioristic to a social cognitive approach to learning, as well as provide evidence for Bandura's social learning theory, which was later modified into the social cognitive theory. This research has greatly impacted all of psychology, but especially educational psychology. One topic that has remained relevant today based on this study is the impact of violent video games and child behavior. Though we still have much to learn regarding social and observational learning, we owe a great deal to the and colleagues for the understanding of learning that we do have. The end, and thanks for listening.